Adam Clayton from U2. This is my new amplifier that I've worked very hard with Fender to come up with. It's a combo, it's 50 watts, and you need to hear it. You know, I started playing bass. It's the classic story. There were two guitar players in the band and one of them wanted me to play bass. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really know what bass guitar was, but I figured it's got four strings. It looks a lot cooler. I should be able to kind of find my way around this. And, you know, it was only much later after I'd come to America and realized the rich heritage of rhythm and blues and, and great bass players here. And I mean, I, I was even late to James Jameson, but um, I, kind of, I kind of made up for it since. I think I developed this style just through thinking I was a guitar player to begin with. Um, when, when I grew up, you know, I got my first little cassette player, you know, it had one little sort of four or five inch speaker and you couldn't hear any bottom end on it and it distorted really quickly. But I noticed that people like John Entwistle, uh, when I listened to Who Records, I could really hear what the bass was doing, it would come through and, and I realized that mid-range was a bit of a, a bass player's kind of secret weapon if you wanted to be heard. Um, in the, I, I grew up in the in the days of punk rock, and you know the bass player became the star of the band in punk rock. You know you you had the leather jacket, you had the bass slung low. That was that was about using your bass as a weapon, and and you had to have a sound that was also abrasive and would cut through. So again, I keep harking back to the mid range, which is what this amplifier is also about. Um, and it just, I love that distortion, and we've got some valves here that give us great distortion. So it's distortion and mid-range for me with a little bit of top end just to kind of punch through. I think also when, when looking at the way the U2 sound grew, we were, you know, we, we may be an unusual band in that we are essentially a three-piece musical ensemble. And within that, Edge's guitar playing is very stylized based on these arpeggios, which, you know, sonically are kind of high up in the register. And whilst if whilst the bass has to fill that mid-range for, for him to kind of really support those sounds. So I've got a lot of room to, to grow my sound. If we'd been a bigger band with, with keyboards and stuff, I guess I'd have gone lower. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of some of those reggae sounds. I, I really love low end, but it, it doesn't work in U2 because um, I need to drive, I need to be aggressive. We don't have those mid-range power chord things that a lot of other bands would have. found, again, when I was starting out, it was very hard to find that mid-range distorted sound that I liked. Um, and I, I tried a lot of, lot of different amps. And when I first started talking to the, the Fender team about this project, I realized that with, traditionally with Fender amplifiers, you know, it scooped out the mid-range. And, you know, it, great amplifiers, if you're in a big band and you want top end and low end, but nothing filling out the mid. And I, I, I understood the philosophy, but I, I went to the team at Fender and said, look, let's, let's approach this differently. Let's do something that, you know, Fender isn't known for and, and doesn't do traditionally. The fashion nowadays is, is to move away from, from valves, but I've always liked them. I think they give a warmth and, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, I found that for most of the work that I do now, uh, it's it's a mixture of small amplifiers that are easily movable. Uh, on our on our stage, when we go out on the road now, uh, we don't have anything on the stage. We keep the stage very very clean, so you know, space is of an optimum under the stage. Um, myself and, and my tech, Stuart Morgan, we like to set up a lot of different sounds on a number of different amps. So just so that he doesn't have to work too late into the night, we kind of opted for 
a, a small combo operation where you know you can move things in and out and it saves an awful lot on trucking i'll tell you that so i like the fact that even i can lift this and uh, if i'm confronted with a flight of stairs it's no problem to take it up there Ask me about the tweeter. Um, you know, I in when when I'm in the studio, that tweeter doesn't really add to the sound for me. Um, and then when I found I found that when when I went out on the road, and you, you kind of inevitably you switch from a kind of hard wire to a transmitter. If if I have a tweeter in the system, it gets very very hissy and and very hard sounding, and I just I don't like that. I like a bit more warmth in the sound. So I've always avoided it. But I think, you know, I think you can get that 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 high end out of a, a good speaker depending on how you set your tone. Well, I like the fact that you can really you can really select where that mid range hits. You know where where you select that. And for me, I. I set I set up my sound for playing with a plectrum because that's where I need the most kind of high end to cut through, uh, and then I know if I kind of set the high end at about ooh, you know about a one. In fact, I set everything at about a, a, a one o'clock. Um, then when I switch to finger style um, or play dampened with my thumb or something, the tone just kind of carries all the way through. I find that you know there's a, there's a channel that I is my go-to channel and that has uh, all the variation that I want in that mid-range that we've been talking about, um, and then in the second channel it's just raw power, and I tend to go to that when I want a more simple um, low-end type of sound and you know I'm not blending the middle so much. Uh, I, I occasionally I I go in for those reggae-ish tones which work on a song like Mysterious Ways um, and you know I like to I like to get that range into the sound. So on that second channel I would do uh, something like Angel of Harlem which is which is kind of my tribute to James Jameson. I mean it's got a very Motowny kind of feel throughout the whole thing. Um, I'm when I'm on a plectrum which would be Streets of No Name or Bullet the Blue Sky or even New Year's Day, you know, these kind of songs, Pride in the Name of Love, I need to drive a bit more, you know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the power in those songs very often and, and Edge is adding the decoration around the, the basic root notes. Primarily, it's, it's designed for rock players. I mean, I, let's not make any bones about that. Um, but I think it's, it is versatile. Uh, and I think if you like the power ratio, and if, you, if you're moving around a lot, or if you don't have much space in wherever you like to practice, this is the amp for you. Well, I think the good thing about this amp is that actually we, we didn't veer too far away from what was traditional Fender colors and looks and everything. So when you first look at it, you don't realize how contemporary it is. Um, we've kind of made a few changes. There's uh, a line out. Um, we've improved the visibility on it. Um, so it has that traditional look where it'll, it'll sit nicely in a, in a club environment. But then when I take it on tour and connect it up to our kind of live setup, I'll be miking it as well as taking the line out. Check it out, it'll change your life.